All right, this is my second time recording this because I forgot to enable the audio. Ah, that's fun, isn't it? Okay, so here's the code for the um, the whole DMA thing. Actually, no, this is just this is just UART. This is a simple UART. Um, I'm enabling the UART. I have this string that I want to transfer across the UART. Um, here, I'm just waiting for a button press on my board and then it starts the UART transfer and it's nothing more than a for loop uh, counting through this uh, array and sending each character at a time uh, through the UART data register uh, once that's done um, once it sends a character I wait for it to send the actual character so then I can send another one and then uh, again I'm cycling through my uh, my whole string there so let me take you to this uh, where to call it pulse view let me zoom in there um, so I'm gonna press run and press the button and obviously it transfers it a whole bunch of times because obviously it's not humanly possible for me to press that button just once when I press it it's gonna you know loop a whole bunch of times just because I can't you know be an instant press and as you can see, it's just there transferring hello world, I mean hello YouTube across the UART. And I have this set to UART at uh, 96 baud and all that great stuff. Um, actually, I have another version here for you. There you go, the big version. And this is what I messed up before. I didn't have audio on this screen. Uh, because this is better because you can see it uh, much bigger. So yeah, hello YouTube. It's just transferring it over and over um, through the UART. But that's just normal code, right? Where we have the for loop and it's basically, it's the CPU taking whatever's in this side and moving it to the data register over here, checking this flag, then going to the for loop again. It's, it's, it's doing work. So let's enable the DMA and um, let's have the DMA do it, right? So I have here the DMA code and it's all commented out. And it's such few lines, right? First thing I'm going to do, oh, you see? Uh, I forgot to switch screens, that happened before also. Switching screens, there you go. Okay, so what I just did was that I had the DMA uh, code like this, it was closed. Uh, so I opened it up and I uncommented it out. Um. Okay. So yeah. So here's my DMA code. Oh, where you go? Here. It's just these six lines, right? Uh, the first thing I'm doing is I'm enabling DMA one on the RCC block. Okay, you do that anyways with anything. I go to UART three control register three. So, what's over there is something very important. UART three control register three. So here, I'm enabling, this is what I'm doing on that line, I'm enabling DMAT, DMA transmit. So this tells the UART that for transmissions to use the uh, the DMA. So I'm doing that. Uh, the next thing I'm doing is uh, in that counter register for the DMA, I'm entering the length. How many um, len is equal to this right here, the length of my string. And oh, one thing I wanted to mention is the DMA, um, con the, the writing conventions. You have to do DMA1, for example, if you're using DMA1, underscore channel, and then the channel that you're using. And then from there, you can access the registers, right? The only two registers that you don't see there are, what the hell, are your status register and your clear register, your flag clear register. That's because those two registers are global to the DMA and not really to a specific channel. So in that case, to access those, you don't need channel one. You just need DMA one. And then you can access your status register and your flag clear register. So again, I go to channel seven. I set the length of how many transfers I want to do to be equal to the length of this string. Then I go back to channel seven. I'm going to the control register and I'm enabling um, memory increment, right? Because I want it to transfer and then increment to the next memory. So it's gonna start here 
transfer and then it's going to increment the memory and then it's going to be here transfer increment transfer you get the picture direction is set high because I'm reading from memory so I'm reading from my array and I'm transferring it to the data register so that's high if I was doing Rxing on the UART it would be set to zero because at that point I'd be reading from per my peripheral I've enabled the um, <clears throat> timer co transfer complete interrupt I didn't actually implement it because it's just another interrupt you should know how to implement the interrupts by now if you've watched my other videos um, again you would just implement the interrupt and do what you have to do in there and I have it in circular mode that way that once I'm done transferring let's say 10 bytes or however long that string is it'll reset the counter back up to 10 and then since it incremented through my memory it's gonna go back to the start so that's what circular mode does for you then I went to the CPAR register where you put the address of the peripheral um, location so I gave it the address of the data register so that's where it's gonna <clears throat> write to and then I went to the CMAR and I gave it the address of my string so that's telling it hey get data from you know from here and move it over there um, well this is not really what tells it this direction bit it was telling it that's gonna read from here and then write to here if this is zero then it's gonna read from here and write to here so that's it there's just these six lines that all your DMA uh, configuration is going to consist of then you're gonna go over here I'm gonna uncomment this and I'm gonna comment the code where we did it manually and now obviously if you notice over here I didn't enable the DMA channel because enabling it the DMA channel at least for the UART once you enable it it starts the transmission so I enable it here on my button press <clears throat> loop um, so I enable the channel and then I wait for the transfer to be complete once the transfer is complete of all these um, all these bytes then I clear the flag in the clear flag register the flag clear register I clear the flag and then I disable the channel because if I don't disable the channel it's gonna keep doing it and even though it seems like it keeps doing it because I'm pressing the button and like I said I can't press it just once it's hard it's gonna seem that it keeps doing it but it actually stops and what seems like it's doing it again is because I'm still holding the button so in essence uh, this is all the DMA code you need um, to transmit obviously and this right here all of this would be in an interrupt routine I just didn't actually set it up but that would all be in an interrupt routine so there's no waiting there's no nothing anything I'm sorry there's no anything because all of that is handled once the actual interrupt complete fires and then it jumps to an interrupt and in there you clear the flag so in that interrupt all you would need is this line you would not need this line right you would just need this line and this line clear the flag disable the right the thing and then you just and you know enable it whenever you want to do a transfer the only reason I have this while loop and, and this stuff here is because I didn't enable I didn't actually write an interrupt routine for it um so yeah this is basically all you need and let's see it in action again back to post view and I'm gonna hit run and press that little button down there there you go if I hold it you see it keeps going so all of these are transfers and it's just transferring hello YouTube and like I said the great thing about this if you ignore the fact that I didn't implement uh, an interrupt routine that's all that's it that's all you need is this right here is that code right there once you do this the DMA starts doing it and your program can start doing more intensive tasks whatever it needs to do because you don't have to do anything you know right so transferring something like this you might think oh that's nothing but once you get into like more and more data like a lot of data um, or maybe you have a sensor or, or something that's constantly sending you data 
and you're constantly interrupting your 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 uh, microcontroller or constantly um, you know what I mean having to handle that data uh, it takes a it takes a, a, a toll on your CPU as far as resources go but in this manner um, the DMA is just whatever data it's getting it's moving into the address that you need it to be at if you're receiving um, and you don't even have to enable the interrupt for example um, when you have let's say you have an I squared C sensor uh, let me change my view here so let's say you have an I squared C sensor and it's constantly sending some sort of value to your microcontroller now instead of interrupting your microcontroller every time you get a value you can just have the DMA say hey every time I get a value on I squared C put it into variable X and that's it it's always going on in the background not interrupting your microcontroller and you can rest assured that anytime you read value X it's gonna have the latest data right and not because you did it but because the DMA is constantly doing it oh lord I hope I didn't mess this one up because Jesus um, uh, enjoy it I hope you guys use the DMA as you can see it's it, it's not complicated at all open up your data sheets read through it uh, if in case I missed anything you know what I mean play with it with different peripherals all the peripherals like SPI UART I squared C if you go to the functional description or something like that it tells you it'll say uh, using with DMA transmitting with DMA you know, with something with DMA and there's always a bit or something in the register that will enable it to send the DMA requests. All right, guys. Later, skip.